Uh, today we're going to talk to Rob Rocco from the show uh, Riverdale and Supernatural, just to name a few. He has a band with KJ Appa called Legend. He's the face slash ambassador of Fendi Eyewear, uh, too good looking for his own good. He's a frequent flyer at the Viper Room and his band does not suck. Let's give him a call. Five or more questions with Tommy Black. Tommy Black, baby. Rob Rocco, how are you? What's going on, my man? What's going on? I'm doing well. How are you? I missed you last night. I'm going to come back. It was a great show. You've been a fixture at the Viper Room lately. Um, yeah. You have been. Yeah. I, I remember. I'm a little barfly. You're what? <laughs> A little bar fly in the corner. <laughs> nah, I, I remember the first time you were there. I'm like, "Hey, man, you're you're too good looking to be in here. You got to go." <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. And then and then I started getting worse looking. And you started getting better and wiser looking. And, nah. uh, and here we are. <laughs> there you are. <laughs> so, Jeez, the gears. so Rob, you are from Canada, correct? I am Windsor, Ontario. Windsor, yeah. Ontario, and um, you started a, a drum shop with your father. There, I did. Yes, I uh, in 2005. Me and the old man, uh, I was touring. I was a kid, and uh, you know, you just go through drum sets and stuff like that. And um, I, I wasn't getting any endorsements, and I knew I needed to upgrade. And um, and so I decided to 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 pull the chain on a company and ask him if he'd be willing to to attempt this. And we launched a little company, Essex County Drums, and built a, a slew of drum sets and, and snare drums. And, wow. And, and I always have it in the wings. And yeah, it's a, it's a fun little father son project. That's cool. Yeah. What, what bands were you touring with back then? Just some pop, punk, pop, punk, pop rock uh -huh. stuff that I had done from high school, you know, some local tours, nothing, nothing too intense. By the time we started getting noticed, it was 2009, and the Canadian music industry kind of plummeted. Mm -hmm. And, uh, recession hit and the labels closed doors and uh, that's when I moved out to LA. Huh. So it's, uh, yeah, yeah, it's, it's kind of a journey. It's interesting over there. Like there's a certain number of Canadian artists that have to be played on the radio or something yeah. like that, right? Is that how it works? Yeah, and, and, and same goes with film, uh, apparently. You know, a certain amount of people cast while there's an American show filming in Canada and not to... You know, I think that's great for young Canadian artists or, or just Canadians in general. But it doesn't necessarily always put talent first, mm. um, which is something in the Canadian... Uh, now, acting is one thing, but the music side of things, you know, we're known for... Uh, we're known for a Canadian sound, and mm -hmm. it's not necessarily the greatest thing, you know. I, it's, uh, it's hard because it, people try to sound American, but they come out with this, this Canadian rock sound and something like that, and it just... It's, it's just really interesting who makes it from Canada and stays in Canada just to get their own, you know, radio play as opposed to, you know, branching out to the world uh, and doing it the proper way, in my opinion. But people, like like the Tea Party, I don't know if I'm dating myself, but people love that. No. Yeah. People love the yeah. Tea Party. I mean. They're, they're from my hometown, funny enough, so I know them. Uh -huh. um, Jeff, the drummer, his son, Nick, is, is they're doing an incredible... They're still touring. Like they yeah, just yeah. they sold out the Roxy, I think, like a month ago uh, here, and you know they they're just one of those hardworking Canadian rock bands. But they don't sound Canadian. Mm -hmm. They have a worldly vibe. You know Jeff Martin mm -hmm. with with you know a huge Zeppelin vibe and, and and Doors vibe that that mixes in between. And I think stuff like that is why you know certain Canadian bands last, like Billy Talents. Mm -hmm. uh, you know they don't they, they have a huge Canadian pull, but they're fucking huge in Germany and, and, and stuff like that because they, they sound like a bunch of punk rock screaming kids with heavy guitars and I think that's cool as opposed to you know our, our Vancouver sound which is you know I, I like to call it cock rock uh, not to <laughs> mean it pays the bills but it you know it's got it's got this this hip thrusting bullshit of, you know it does its thing put it that way yeah. I'm just sick of it <laughs> um, but now yeah, Tea Party for I, they just keep coming up over the years, you know, and they stay they mm -hmm. they still they're still there, you know. I mean, I've opened it for them and different things over the years, and many times I've played with them. Oh, that's um, nuts. um yeah. okay, your band right now. Tell us your band name right yeah. now. Yeah, it's Legend. 
um, yeah, kind of a kind of a, a big name to fill. But um, me and KJ Appa from uh, the show I work on the bill um, about three years ago when we started the show, kind of, you know, it just gets long taxing days of, of being on set and not working or being overworked and just started chatting and obviously while getting to know each other, realized that we're musicians first and, you know, we're lucky in this acting gig. And, um, from there, just, you know, just kept hitting the jam space. One of my, one of my places in Vancouver had a, a jam space right in the alley. So we'd just always have to work, you know, whatever time it was, 24 hours, bring it you know, a few cans of beer and, wind down. and, 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 and yeah, and kind of wind down until it started getting good. And mm-hmm. it was at the beginning of this year where, you know, we had interest from, um, from, you know, news outlets and stuff like this. And we're like, Hey, well, let's try this out. So we started a show. We did a guest show in Vancouver and played mainly covers and then, mm-hmm. uh, played you guys at the Viper room mm-hmm. and, uh, mm-hmm. and then did a giant team, team Vogue thing downtown. And then we, then it kind of kicked our ass into being, uh, a little more serious with with the the music and starting to hunt down in originals and hit the studio about a month later and then just wrap the full album in Seattle about a month ago. So uh, the 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 journey of it w- was pretty quick and insane. But because we all come from very fast paced lives, we figured we'd hunt down and and do something that's very organic to us. So mm. Legend is the band. Mm. And hope to hear some stuff out soon. Yeah, from, no, it was. From us, yeah. I've seen you guys yeah. twice. You did a couple yeah. of your little jammy thing at the at the Sunset Jam. You did some songs. Yeah, both times yeah. it was really really good. Um, and so, yeah, and people loved yeah, it. Stop. People people were freaking. Yeah. Well, and you're being low key about it, you know, which is really cool. You know? I think that's a, I think that's the best move to do yeah. instead of using celebrityism out of something that we've gained in, in, in television. It's how to, how to prove and not come out too soon. Um, but to prove that we're actual musicians, not just, you know, TV stars that want to play music. It's, you know, it's something I'd be very insulted for seeing, um, you know, that it happens every day in, in yeah. Los Angeles. A TV yeah. star wants to pick up a guitar and is now, an, you know, a massive star and they're, they're just not that good. So we make sure that we put music first and that's why nothing will be rushed and, no. Uh, it'll be done right. So. You're taking your time, and you don't want it to overshadow what it what it really is. That's cool. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, exactly. All right. So you moved to L.A. when? I moved to. I've been in on on and off now. Or have you ever six. moved? Do you did you ever <laughs> move to L.A.? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, I would do now. I finally have a house in the valley. Uh huh. Um, but. Um, I've been on and off here because of work in Vancouver and New York. I've been on and off here maybe six, seven years. Cool. Uh, shit, it's been a minute. Yeah. So you're, ba- but, you're based. Uh, you're based in LA, pretty much. Um. Yeah, I'm an LA based boy now. Yeah. Cool. And a, yeah. and a, again, a fixture at Viper. Um. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> when did the Riverdale thing happen? Um. And that happened out of Vancouver. That happened out of Vancouver. Yeah, I was I was doing a, an indie film up in Vancouver, uh-huh. and uh, and I'd met the boys at the hotel after and haven't heard of the show. And you know, I luckily got an audition a couple of weeks later and ended up booking and staying in Vancouver on and off for three years to do it. Wow. Um. So that 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 happened in 2016, mm-hmm. and uh, I got wrapped out at the beginning of this year. Uh-huh. So I would have uh, I would have died out, and you know, it's an ongoing show, but we'll see where my character goes, even though he's dead. Mm-hmm. But uh, might come back. Yeah, it's one of those, <laughs> yeah, you never know with these teen dramas, right? So right. We right. just uh, we just put our heads down and keep going. But yeah, that show kind of changed my life in that perspective. And uh, uh, you know, I'd been acting only a minute prior to it, and 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 got a very, I want to say, lucky, although hard earned. It is still a very lucky position to be in uh, with such a successful show. So yeah, what was it like working with Luke Perry? Oh, Luke, uh, man, Luke was a, Luke was a, uh, I, I don't want to overuse the word, but he was a, a true legend hmm. and, and a, a father figure on set. You know, I've worked with quite a bit of, um, of established actors in, in my life, but someone like Luke, who's been in this game for a long time, accepted and, um, gave hope to a, a, a lifestyle that could be 
wonderful. So he always would just encourage you in this. Uh, and he's the type of man who would go out of his way to come say hi to you, which just put it in my brain mm. of how incredible and professional and at the same time how much of a joke our career is when it can just be we're just human beings so someone like luke put put that humanity back into something and uh i'll never forget that it's such a shock uh truly mm. I, I i've had the privilege of, of having many beers at the bar with him after set because we shared the same hotel and him just giving life advice out of nowhere, not with acting, not with anything else. Just He would just talk to you about life as a father, as yeah. someone who had kids. And so, uh, yeah, it, it inspired me to, to grow into that one day. Uh, so, yeah, incredible, wow. incredible human being. Wow, that's beautiful. Yeah. What a great opportunity for you to work with someone like that. It definitely blew up LA for me. So, but yeah. like a lot of other greats, you're starting with music and it, it, it evolved into acting, and that's a cool that's a cool path to follow. <laughs> or going I, I going think, back and forth, uh, combining yeah, the two. You know, what I, you know what I think it is is, uh, and this is to demean a lot of actors, but um, you know, musicians, especially in the rock world, and that's why I love the Viper Room. It, there's just your ego is left at the door. You're there to watch some music, and it doesn't matter how fucking good you are. You, you, we all do this, and we all have learned our ropes. And when you're on stage, you're as good as you can be at that time. Mm -hmm. and, and that's it. With, with acting, there's a lot of ego that comes in because of what you do. Mm -hmm. And you don't necessarily have to be good half the time. So for me, it, it, it taught, music has taught me and is teaching me to be a better actor mm -hmm. at all times, to mm -hmm. listen to moments, to, to, to really respect it, and to keep humble and low and, and hone in on your craft. It doesn't matter what your success is. It's just you you know what you can be and you know what you want to do and that was the same with me in drumming you know it was 15 years of drumming before i i got into acting so mm -hmm. i know i can pick up sticks and, and rip a uh a mean solo on stage with acting i'm still learning so i think it creates an energy of a little more careless mm -hmm. and a little hard working so there's a you know little to no ego walking about and uh and it's just get your work done and and be a be a rock star at all times, kind of kind of vibe. Mm. If that makes sense. Acting and musical influences, since they tie in, give me give me both of them. Ooh, um, music wise, I'm a huge Led Zeppelin nerd. I love John Bonham. Yeah. The, um, yeah. The, the 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 thought. I know it's a typical drummer answer, but for me as a kid, I was I was I was bullied a lot. So for me to hear thunder <laughs> from you know four or five drums. And then be able to create it and be the loudest in the room just allowed me to separate and focus on what the fuck I'm worth, which was the greatest kicking point. And I got that a lot through John. Um, but uh, in acting, huge fan of Robert De Niro, mm. Shia LaBeouf. Uh, I love the early works of Johnny Depp. I think uh, I think being a character first and being not not worrying about success is a yeah. huge, huge bonus in our in our career. Totally. Um, yeah, yeah, I think be free, be wild. So yeah, yeah those all, they all kind of, you know, the actors I chose that don't play music are very musical within their acting, which is something interesting that I found out. Mm -hmm. And, you know, Depp obviously being the both of both worlds is kind of an interesting way of, 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 of seeing it. So yeah. it's, um, it's, yeah, it's fun to see the growth of new actors come up and, and, and how it, how it evolves in this and music as well, you know. Yeah. But, uh, and Depp made good long term decisions early on, it seemed like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, and I think that's very important. It's you know, it's it's the ability we all have to do it, and a lot of people talk down about it, but we all do it. It's when you know you're going to do a money job versus a, a soul job, right? And if you don't hone down that, and that goes the same with music, you know. Exactly. If you, got, you know, if if Ariana Grande came up to me and asked me to play drums for two years on a tour. That would be the same as me doing a teeny bop television show. Now, mm -hmm. that's not going to hone my craft and skills, but it's going to get my face out there in the music world at a different level than it is. Then that's going to allow me to open doors and meet musicians on the way that allow my, my creativity side to come out. And you never know where that's going to lead. And I think those go hand in hand. You know, like Riverdale is a great show and great start, but, you know, it's not a taxi driver of movies. And to be able to do that or to become an Edward Scissorhands, you need to be able to, to see the path straight ahead 
and stick to it. And I think your 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 strongest word in the industry, no matter what you do, an artist of any kind, is to really believe in the word no mm-hmm. when it suits you, and and being strong behind it. And don't be an idiot. You know, don't throw away opportunities. But know when it doesn't benefit you to sell something out. Mm. Um, and I think that's huge. Yeah, that's uh, yeah. I think that's what we're missing. Good stuff. Tell us about your awesome Jeep. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, my Jeep makes my heart ache. Uh, I love it. So I just, uh, <laughs> for the first time, I just took the doors off. I got oh. the mirrors so it can be legal. Uh-huh. And I've been driving through, I'm up in the valley here, so it's really easy to jet over to, you know, to go west through these weird hills and stuff. And, that's uh, got to be amazing. Go through to Topanga and stuff. It, dude, it's like driving through a different country, and the the car just drives better. But it's, there's no doors, so you're just like in this vast land. It's boiling hot. I'm hoping it doesn't overheat, but you know, be careful. It's an old guy. It's okay. Yeah, be careful. It's fun. it's it's it's, uh, it's like more like flying than flying. <laughs> <laughs> it, yeah, yeah you're, and with one wrong turn, you're doing both. So, you are um, flying. Yeah it's, yeah, it's too close. To <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I just put the new sound system in, which is great. I got 12 speakers in it finally. Wait, and is it a new little, a new newer sound system? I've uh, updated since I got it tuned <laughs> since last time you've been in there. Oh. It's got four subwoofers, three three sets of speakers and tweeters, and uh, and you know with no doors or windows, it's so loud. It's like a it's like a front of house system driving by, and I always listen to like classic CCR driving music or stuff like that. Cool. So I'm like, cool. I'm the nerd. I'm like a nerd seventies character. Yeah, but, drive, uh, drive, hey. over, drive over Maholland and Laurel listening to that stuff. Which is yeah, your, your yeah. Head. It's the same with you. Same with you and your bike, man. Yeah. That's uh, that's the next. That's the next step. Me and a bike. It's therapy. So yeah, it, it's, it is. It's like you meditating. Need. You know, sometimes it's like it, oh, living in LA. You need you need a car or a vehicle that that benefits you because you're obviously going to begin it all day. So whatever whatever benefits you as a human mentally, I think that's an important thing. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? I think it's mm-hmm. important to, to just sit next. So, just yeah, don't man. fly with it. Don't no <laughs> no, no, no fly. Same, same to you no 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 evil can evil shit <laughs> wild fuck uh, okay and now you're the face slash ambassador of Fendi uh, how did that happen that's huge oh yes uh, yeah quite a quite a big uh, life change uh, I never I never thought about fashion in my life mm-hmm. until I got approached last or two years ago by a company Hugo Boss who had flown me out for a party in Berlin and through that I had met an incredible uh, rep and uh, we kind of became family and Mm -hmm. you know lo and behold at the beginning of the year she she and her team had pitched me for Fendi and we had scored the campaign and from that I I didn't know what that meant until I flew to Italy and and started hanging out with these people and, and realized that the fashion industry, although cutthroat, is very similar to music, where you have your heads of the companies that, you know, they fund, and then you have the creative directors, the producers, that really just want the best for the product, and it's all at a high level. So it's like hanging out at the Grammys, being like, everyone here can make some heads turn, and they have, but they're really cool about it. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So it, it, I then had realized how I want to incorporate fashion into my music and you know kind of go into that um so yeah fendi fendi it's still going we just got back from italy about two weeks ago for the second campaign Mm. and uh i think that's released in october and uh some wild sunglasses out there i'm excited to 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 wear them and uh and wear some funky clothes and and support a company who has become family to me uh, and and you know, hand in hand, so very cool. Yeah, quite very cool. Yeah, quite a different, quite a different life. Yeah, totally different. You're covering all angles. Give me a memory or a story or uh, what? What do you think of when you think of Viper Room? Uh, Viper Room to me, the first, the first time I'd come to Viper properly was 2013. It was the uh, the anniversary. So all the napkins had the special little anniversary on them. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And um, I remember just sitting at the bar, and I had just finished that River Phoenix book. Uh-huh. And that's how I had known of the club. I didn't know that Depp owned it prior to or all this stuff. I just read this book, and it was all in there. And I'm like, wow, this is the place. Cool. Didn't know it's still around. 
and then immediately just felt at home. Mm. It was like um, it was like a an upkept, especially then because it's been revamped a little bit. But then it was like an upkept dive bar that had the best music in it, and I'm mm. like, this is what we're missing. Uh, this is what we're missing. And from there, I just, as much as I could, always repeated until, you know, in the last couple of years, tried to make it a staple for me to scout music. And uh, so, yeah, my me- my first memory there was just, like, smelling it and being like, these bathrooms are trash. And I'm like, what is going on? And then it getting revamped into even, you know, like, accepting you guys have done such a great job, but, like, all the stickers on the wall and everything and being like, now it's professionally set in this era and it's incredible and i'm like oh man it just it, there's just an energy in there that can't be uh can't be duplicated around and i i genuinely mean that or else i'd be a little staple at other places but mm. the vipers stolen my heart stolen my heart awesome so, awesome yeah. all right well awesome. thanks for chatting and looking forward to seeing you there in the near future rob I'll do that tonight <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. <laughs> Me too. Uh, All right. Tommy. Well, take it easy. Nice, <laughs> nice talking to you. Thank you. Okay. Ciao, brother. Thank Bye. you. Don't forget to subscribe to Five or More Questions with Tommy Black on your favorite podcast app and visit viperroom.com for upcoming shows. <laughs>